Good morning, Raptor Freaks. Alexi Ots here, and it is off-season. So we are back on off-season mode for the Raptor Freak channel. And Tuesdays, as most of you know, is for Raptor Freak Tuesday trivia. Well, we haven't played many many games uh, during the season this year because I did it a little differently than last year. I didn't have a game every uh, two days off. I just had them when they falled on Tuesdays. And the last time we did a trivia was after the All-Star break. And it was for Scotty Barnes being an all-star. Well, we're going to do trivia today, and I want to see how you guys do. It's going to be uh, about the season this year. So uh, we see. I see that Monique is in here. Good morning, Raptor Freak family. Amazing end of season presser. Yeah, I watched a couple of them, but I did not watch all of them very much in depth. In some ways, M Monique, I'm going to cover the, the end of season stuff more tomorrow and possibly Thursday. Because uh, I ended up having to do a bunch of work yesterday, and I did not really do my normal Raptor Freak stuff. I did my trivia, though. I got that already and set for this. So, yeah, and Trevor Jay's here. Good morning, Raptors family. What a great interview with all the players yesterday, speaking highly about the coach and they all lo the love they have for Darko. That was a common sentiment yesterday that uh, a couple of them said this, that they talk to him a lot, that they don't necessarily talk to him about basketball. And that they really like him, and that they uh, they 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 have real develop developing relationships with him. This is great. I mean, this is very opposite Nick Nurse's approach. I don't think Nick Nurse was chummy with these guys for the most part, outside of things for the most part. But who knows? Who knows? D D Darko's awesome. That's the that's the general sentiment about yesterday. And uh, yeah, these guys came back and cleared their lockers out. And uh, drop some interviews. The interviews were Jakob Pertl, Scotty Barnes, R.J. Barrett, Emmanuel Quickly, Kelly Olenek, and Grady Dick. Now, those six guys are the core going forward, obviously. It's very interesting that Gary wasn't there. I have no idea what, what that means or anything like that for whether he's going to do well or not. So, yeah, we've got 17 questions. we got the classic car of the day. We've got a couple of little things, but we're not going to try and be in here for too long, y'all, just so you know. we got 11 people in here, so I'm, you know what? I might just start now. Fiercely saying good morning, fam, and happy Tuesday, a.k.a. Trivia Day. I really enjoyed the pressers, and I'm excited about the future. I know I repeat myself, but I'm giddy. That's fine. That's a, that is fine, Fiercely. I'm glad you're enjoying yourself. And repeat away. I repeat myself a lot <laughs> sometimes, and I totally get it. Tom Duke's here. Hello there. 100%. It all starts now it all starts, Fiercy. That's right. Well, let's see what happens. Lex, what does uh, S3G22 from the title mean? That's season three, uh, game 22 of the Raptor Freak Trivia. So if you're ever keeping track of things, that, that S3 means season three. That means it's the third season we've done trivia. And uh, this is game 22 of the third season. So it's kind of like uh, if you're watching a TV show and you see S3 uh episode 22 it's like season three episode 22 so it's kind of what it is uh, uh monique all right you're going you're going all on the news let's do the trivia first and we'll do the news afterwards uh monique saying congratulations to leah edwards for being drafted last night yes a WNBA draft i haven't even looked at the results of that i'm telling you i'm coming in blind in a lot of ways i did take care of the one thing that's important i did write trivia though and uh, Fiercely saying hi to Tom. And Smooth's here. He's saying, good morning, Jordy Fernandez, new Brooklyn coach. Now, is that official? Because I saw the rumblings of it late last night, but I did not see the any any actual, actual, actual news for sure. Now, if it's not totally for sure, um, I want to know if it is or not. Now, let me look it up. I'm just going to look it up real quick. Because that's, this is important, and I want to just see what the news is today about Jordy. Okay. It says, it says the nets are prepared to hire Jordy Fernandez as the next coach. Uh, and it says report uh, nets to hire King's assistant coach, uh, Jordy Fernandez. I don't know if this is exactly tr for real yet. This doesn't mean that it's happened yet. This just means that he's, he's there's there, there two, there's a report out that uh, it hasn't been official yet. But, uh, yeah, it's looking like it. it. looks like Jordy might be the next coach for the Nets. Blah. In some ways, I don't like this at all uh, just because of Team Canada responsibilities. Cool Cats here. Good morning, Rat Free Crew. Congrats to our new Canadian WNBA. 
Uh, Leah Edwards, yes, a, a hometown hero from the greater Toronto area, is joined the the WNBA. Trevor saying the Fernandez gets hired. The Fernandez gets hired by the Brooklyn Nets. <laughs> There's a report out. It's not anything official yet. It does sound like it's probably going to happen, but it's not official. The rumblings were last night. Uh, Fiercey saying Jordy can guide us to the medal for the Olympics, then move on to the Brooklyn or Charlotte. Yeah, I don't like this because that's not how this works, Fiercey. If he gets hired by the Nets today, he's going to have to do a whole bunch of work to get ready for being a Nets coach. And that means hiring coaches. That means uh, starting to reach out to players. In some ways, he shouldn't be reaching out to those players right now. He should be reaching out to the Team Canada players and starting to prepare them for the Olympics. You can think about how Darko had to start his year last year. He had to hit the ground running as soon as he was hired by the Raptors. And so much work was put into the summer and establishing his culture, the way he's going to coach the team and all that kind of stuff. And if Jordy is going to be trying to do that at the same time as trying to coach the Olympic team for Canada, this is not going to be good. It's going to be like he split places. Maybe he can do something where he's like, all right, I'm going to do the net stuff uh, up and before. And then when it's Team Canada stuff, I'm just solely focused on it. And then I'll come back and do net stuff after that again. I hope that's how he can do it. But the problem is that he's going to be very distracted in some ways about his new job as an NBA head coach. And that's why this is a bad situation in some ways. So ah, we'll see how it all works out. We'll see how it all works out. Yeah. Uh, all right, y'all, don't comment anymore. I'm going to uh, go ahead and start the trivia after Chris's last comment there. So I'll read these ones here. Uh, cool Cat saying, my dream of Jordy ever coaching the Raptors has evaporated. Congrats. Woj reported late in the night that he is hired. That's for sure because I don't see it official anywhere yet. It's a report. It's not an actual official signing, but we'll see. It's probably true. Uh, Fiercey saying, uh, oh, yeah, I said I, I read that one already. And uh, Chris is saying lots in the news. WNBA draft was cool. Brinks and Reese in those dresses. Whoa. And then Randolph saying blessings on all you amazing Raptor Freaks. Most informed the game. I'm here to be informed. All right, let's do it then. Let's inform people today. So obviously the title says this is the year in review for the season. And that means it's going to be. Yeah, guys, no more. No more comments. I can't talk about Aaliyah right now, y'all. In some ways, I was not prepared to talk about WNBA draft at all today. I'll give her her kudos, and we'll talk a little bit about Caitlin Clark. I may look at the draft and kind of go over what I – because I don't even know who got drafted. I went into a rabbit hole and just did work last night in other areas, and I did not do my normal basketball work because the offseason, I was like, well, I can do my other work. And then I was like, okay, yeah, there's a lot of work still because there's a WMA draft. Obviously, Team Canada guys, trying, they're trying to hire him. So, But, no, I, I, don't, I haven't looked at anything really. So we'll look at it afterwards. Yeah, thank you, Chris. That's a very nice uh, delineation you just did. Yeah, Aaliyah Edwards gave an insp inspirational speech for the young Canadian ballers. Yeah, I didn't. I wasn't on TV. I wasn't watching TV at all last night. So I didn't see anything. All right, I'm going to go ahead and start this. So basically, yeah, I'm, I don't want to explain this too much. It'll be very self-explanatory. And uh, be, be a light on your feet and answer quickly. And Chris, if you want to do any kind of cutting off between questions, that might help me today because this thing could be a little blurring on this one. All right. The first question is very simple. Who scored? First person to write it in 50 points for each correct answer. There's a lot of correct answers today. There's like three for each, each question. So you guys are going to get like 150 points each question, 50 divided among the three questions that are answers. The first question is, who scored the most total points for the Toronto Raptors this season? Who scored the most total points for the regular Raptors? Uh, Isaac's got it right off the bat. It is Scotty. Scotty scored the most points for the Raptors in the season this year. So Isaac is getting the first 50 for today. Who scored the second most total points for the Toronto Raptors this year? Total points is what we're talking about. Seymour got that one. Seymour's getting that one. That is Gary Trent Jr., and that is correct. So Seymour's getting the second one. All right, the next question, this is still number one. Who scored the most total points for the 905 this year? After Pascal is the next answer. Yeah, after Pascal will be the next answer. Who scored the most total points for the 905 this season? JFL is right. Chris is going to get that one. So see, you can get it right answers with JFL to this year. This today, Chris, there you go. So, yeah, uh, for the answer so far, Pascal was wrong. RJ was wrong. 
Uh, yeah, there you go. So the two highest score, two most total points scored for the Raptors this season were Scotty Barnes and Gary Trent Jr. And then JFL scored the most points for the 905. There you go. All right, Tom, uh, Trevor, uh, MSJ's got the next. Cool. Thank you. That's awesome, Chris. That's really helpful. Um, who had the most total rebounds for the Toronto Raptors this season? Who had the most rebounds for the Toronto Raptors this season? Uh, West Coast Rules. That's right. Uh, IQ is not right. Yak is not right. Who had the most total rebounds for the Toronto Raptors this season out of anybody? Yeah. Uh, Barnes is right. Kareem's going to get that. Now, y'all, I, I want y'all to not half-ass things, just so you know. <laughs> but if you do a little bit, that's fine. All right, and and uh, who had the most total rebounds for the 905 this season? That's the next one. Who had the most total points for the 905 this season? No, not points, rebounds. Sorry, we're doing rebounds right now. Who had the most total rebounds? Mogi is right. Fiercey's going to get that one. Mogi is exactly right. All right, who had the second most rebounds for the Raptors? Uh, uh, after uh, Maker Maker is not right. Next, thank you, Chris. Who had the second most rebounds total for the Raptors this season? Scotty had the most. Uh, MSJ saying Pirtle. That's right, Chris. You're getting Pirtle. Pirtle is right. Pirtle had the second most rebounds. OG did not. OG did not. No. So we've got a. Uh, all right, good. We're getting we're getting through this pretty good. So we're going to do the next category. Who had the most total assists for the Raptors this? Past season, who had the most assists? Yak is not right. Who had the most assists? Like he was not right. Seymour's got it. It is Scotty Barnes once again. Scotty had the most total assists this year. Who had the second most assists for the Raptors this year? Who had the second most assists? Uh, Fred Van Vliet's not right. Next, yeah, I'll answer him after next. Who had the second most assists? IQ is wrong. Uh, Dennis, nameless, Dennis, Dennis. Yeah, Dennis is right. Nameless had the second. Nameless is getting that one. The second most assists was Dennis Schroeder, guys. Scotty was first, and Dennis was second. He had more than IQ. Yeah, so it's Dennis. All right, uh, who had the most assists for the 905 this season? And the next one. Yeah, this one's going to be a little quick. And so, yeah, you got to be real quick on your toes. Marquise Noel is right. Uh, Kareem got it. Even though Marquise was out for a lot of the 905 season, he still had the most total assists for his team. Yeah, Noel, Noel. Kareem's in there first. All right, let's go. The next category, What? who had the most total steals for the Raptors this year? Who had the most total steals? Bro, autocorrect. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, no well, no will. <laughs> uh, who had the most steals? Gary Trent? No, Gary did not have the most. Oh, wait, yeah, Gary did have the most steals. Who said that first? Seymour did. Seymour's getting it. Yeah, he had the most steals. Gary did have the most steals this year. Okay, um, who had the most second most steals for the Raptors? Who had the second most steals for the Raptors? Total, total steals, not average, total. Barnes, that's right. The nameless, you get that one. It is Barnes. Barnes had the second most steals. So, yeah, we'll put nameless down there. All right, the question for the 905. Who had the most total steals for the 905? This one's going to be a little funny here. <laughs> who had the second, who had the most steals total for the 905 this year? JFL is not right, guys. JFL did not have the most steals total for the 905 this year. This is going to be hard because I don't think you guys, <laughs> it's not Marquise. It's not Grady. Uh, Bannon, Bannon, who? Steve Bannon? Uh, no, no, we don't have right wing propagandists uh, out playing for us. JFL is the only player you guys know. Well, people that watch the 905 are going to do well on the trivia in some ways. Kobe Bryant is not right. I mean, Kobe Simmons is not right. Jam Jamias Ramsey is not right. Yeah, this is tough. I, I don't know if y'all will get this. In fact, the, the really, the really really hardcore 905ers will get this. I could give a clue, but I don't want to. This may the, be one of the hardest questions today. Yeah, you don't watch 905. I know y'all don't. That's why the people that watch 905 will get some uh, advantage in this trivia today because a third of the questions, are, of the points, are going to be 905 knowledge. So, yeah, it's not Kobe. It's not Jemias. It's not... Marquise, it is not Javon Freeman Liberty. I know this is crazy. Uh, most just listening. Skippy O Buckets. Yeah, we had a lot of players come through for 905 this year, and Skippy was pretty good for a bit, but uh, he didn't last. I think he only played like two games, so he didn't get too many uh, steals. 
Nameless is watching the 905 last season was like pulling teeth. Can anybody blame me? No, I get it. I get it. That's why the real ones, you got to go deep on this one. Mohamedou is not right. Daryl Morsel is a good guess, but that is not right either. It's not Kevin O'Banner. This is good. Fiercey's kind of going through the roster. She knows that's the smart way to do it. It's not Omari Moore, Isaac Campbell. That's a very good guess. I know Isaac was in there with us watching. Uh, Justice Winslow? No, it wasn't Justice Winslow. Seymour saying the coach. That's pretty funny. I'm going to give you a dunk because, honestly, Eric Curry did steal some wins from us this year. So you're going to dunk. 56 dunks for Seymour. That's pretty funny. The coach did the steals. No, Morsel is not right, and no DJ Carton either. In some ways, these guys you're naming, a lot of them didn't play very long in the 905. But you got to think about somebody who was there for most of the whole season, the showcase season and the regular season. Del Air, that's, that's digging deep right there. Now, Isaac's on the right track. But Del Air just showed up near the end. There we go. Fiercey got it. Wow. Good job, Fiercey. It's a number one pick from last summer for the 905, Miles Burns. Miles Burns led the 905 with total steals this year. So, Fiercey, good job. That's super impressive, honestly. And, uh, you know, I, I was like, should I hold out and let them work to get this? Because I don't know if they I will. Well, Fiercey came through. She got it. All right, let's do the blocks. Who had the to most total blocks for the Raptors this year? Most total block shots. Who had the most total block shots for the Raptors? Mm, you see how much a certain person's on this list. That's not right, Chris. Uh, MOG is not right. Scotty Barnes is right. Seymour got it. You see how much C uh, uh, Scotty is on these lists. He's pretty much either one or two on all these categories so far. All right, who's second then? Who's second? Y'all got uh, Barnes in there. Who's got the second most uh, blocks for the Raptors? Second most blocks. Jakob. That's right, Seymour. You're getting that one. Jakob's second. Jakob second, Blockob is second, and Scotty is number one. And who has the most blocks for the 905 total? So you see the pattern that's going on here. Uh, Seymour's just got the beats. He knows it's more Mogi. Seymour has gotten in a rhythm here. And at least he's blocking y'all out from getting the blocks. That's for sure. <laughs> it is Mohamedou Gee. He had the most blocks for the 905 this season. All right, the next category. Now it could go all kinds of different ways now that we've had the, the main categories. Uh, who had the most total three-pointers made for the Toronto Raptors total for the, this year? Who had the most? Uh, let's see. West, thanks, West Coast Rogers, for the great service. <laughs> You're on it, man. Scotty had the most three-pointers made. That is not right. Uh, Gary did. Yeah, Chris got it. Gary had the most three-pointers made for us. Who had the most three-pointers made for the 905 this season? Yeah, who had the most three-pointers made for the 905 this season? uh yeah okay imagine a team where your top shot blocker is not even six foot ten yeah that is the way it is down there jfl is the answer for the 905 so chris is getting that one also chris is getting the threes right now all right and the question is who's the second most uh threes on the raptors this season i'm, I'm getting the answers after ramsey uh the next answer is for the second most total three pointers made is fear c is right it's iq that's kind of interesting that IQ is the one that has the second most threes. If you think about how long he was on our team and uh, yeah. Yeah. So there you go. I, I Emmanuel quickly had the second most threes total for the Raptors this season. And he showed up just for like not even half the season. So that's pretty damn interesting. All right. Next one. Who had the total most free throws made for the Raptors? Who had the most free throws made for the Raptors this season? Who got to the line and made the most free throws for us? It's not IQ. It's Scotty. That's right. Seymour got it. It's it, it, When in doubt, it's kind of like just answer Scotty. Because <laughs> he's pretty much every single one of them. All right. Um, who got the most free throws made for the 905? Thank you, Chris. This has been really helpful, Chris, because this is kind of all over the place. Who got the most free throws made for the 905? This may be a little tough. No, fiercey has got it. It's JFL. JFL did have the most free throws made for the 905. Who had the second most free throws for the Raptors this year? Second most free throws for the Raptors. O'Banner? Uh, no, 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 no. It wasn't O'Banner. JFL had the most free throws made. Gary had the second most free throws for the Raptors? That's not right. RJ? That's not right either. Those are both really good guesses, though. Pascal's right. MSJ got it. Pascal had the second most free throws for the Raptors this year. Made the second most uh, free throw made. Yeah. 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 You got to be quickly today, David. All right, next uh, category. Uh, let's see if you guys can get on this. Who had the most total turnovers for the Raptors this season? Who had the most total turnovers for the Raptors this season? The most total turnovers. Yeah, that's not a good category. 
But, you know, you somebody's going to have to get it. Oh, okay. You guys are not looking at Wara. <laughs> Scotty Barnes is right. David got it. Scotty did have the most turnovers, too. He had a... He had a lot of great stats. I mean, honestly, on all these categories, he's either in it except for with um, the three pointers made. He's he's one of the two top people on every category we've done today, which is pretty cool. Uh, who had the most turnovers made for 905 this season? Who had the most turnovers made for 905? Uh, I want to wonder if you guys will get this. Uh, nope, it's not JFL. JFL did not commit the most turnovers in the 905. Noel, no, no way. It wasn't Noel. Noel's really good with the ball. Winslow? No, nah, it's not really Winslow either. Not Justice. Not Justice Winslow. That little guy, Marquise? No, it's not the little guy. The little guy didn't play a lot of the season. Daryl Marcel has the most turnovers? Nope. Seymour got it. It's Mohamedou. Mohamedou had the most turnovers for the, the 905 this season. Uh, yeah, he's got some stuff to work on here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's it's not JFL on the uh, turnovers, which is interesting. But, it, but it, in some ways, it's usage. In some ways, it's it's trying to get the ball to the guy. And it was Mohamedou Gay. Yeah. Uh, all right. Second most uh, turnovers for the Raptors total. Yeah. Second most turnovers for the Raptors. Yeah. Yeah. Chris really loves JFL. And uh, come on, David. We like to be called vertically challenged. Second most turnovers, uh, Gary Trent? No, it's not Gary Trent. Chris Boucher? No, 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 it's not those guys. Who had the second most turnovers total on the Raptors this season after Scotty? Jakob is not right. Uh, Dennis is not right. Pascal is right. Isaac's going to get that one. Pascal had the second most turnovers in the time while he was on our team after Scotty. Yeah, so there you go. High usage, the ball in your hand a lot, more turnovers. So the guys who had the ball in their hand more, Scotty Barnes, Pascal Siakam, and Mohamedou. Yeah. All right, we're going to switch this up a little bit uh, for the second half of it, so it's a little bit different. This time, we're going to do who averaged the most points per game for the Raptors. Who had the highest scoring average for the Raptors at the end of the season? Yeah, Sean Marion? What? No. Why are you saying Sean Marion? That ain't got nothing to do with this. RJ? No, it's not RJ. Uh, it's Pascal. Isaac got it. It's Pascal once again. Pascal ended up with the highest scoring average this season. Uh, who had the highest scoring average for the 905? You guys can see the pattern I'm doing here. Who had the highest scoring average for the 905? Sean Marion. Why do you keep saying Sean Marion? JFL's right. Fiercely got it. JFL had the highest scoring average for the 905 this year. All right. We'll say who has the second highest scoring average for the Raptors. You guys are getting the pattern here. You're getting the pattern. Lots of people jumping in and getting the answer. You got to be quick today. Scotty, Scotty did not have the second highest scoring average for us this year, guys. Scotty is not right. It is not Scotty. Scotty was third, actually. RJ, RJ is right. Seymour right, got it. RJ Barrett had this. He averaged over 20 points, and Scotty averaged 19.9. So it was Siakam, uh, RJ, and then Scotty as far as scoring average. All right, next category is who averaged the most rebounds per game for the Raptors? Who had the highest rebound per game total? Yeah, in some ways, this isn't about total. This is about who had the best average per game. Scotty is wrong. Isaac got it. It's Pirtle. Pirtle had the highest rebounding uh, uh, average this year for the Raptors. For the 905, who had the highest rebounding average? Yeah, I got to break it up with 905 in the middle so that we know who's uh, – Mogi is not right. Who had the highest rebounding average for them? It's not Mogay. Uh, it is a different uh, 905. Maker McCurr is not right either, guys. Uh, we need to elaborate because we had people with different names on our team that are the same name. So it, full name, don't half-ass me, is what I'm saying on this. This is why I say don't half-ass me, guys, because there are people that have the same name. There you go, Cool Cat. You came through with the whole thing. You full asked it. Uh, it is uh, Jonte Porter. Jonte Porter averaged the highest rebound average for the, the 905 this season. The gambling guy. Yeah. <laughs> the gambling guy. That's right. All right. Who had the second highest rebounding average for the Raptors? Who had the second highest rebounding average for the Raptors? Jakob was first. Who's second? Fiercey's right. It's Scotty. Once again, Scotty had the second highest rebounding average after. Uh, Jakob. Wow, I'm going to have to add all this up. There's a lot of scores here, and it's going to be a lot of scores added to people's stuff. All right, the 11 question out of 17. Who had the most assists per game for the Raptors? Who averaged the most assists for the Raptors? Assists average. Average, not total. 
IQ is right. Seymour is on it, man. He hit whatever his Rogers out West is doing for him is doing it right today. He's doing it right. That's right. Seymour got it. It's IQ. IQ had the highest assist average for the Raptors this year. That's fantastic. That's our point guard for this for the future. And in some ways, he's not even really a passing point guard. He's a scoring point guard. But he still averaged more assists than anybody else on the team, including Dennis and Scotty. So that's pretty impressive. All right. Who had the highest assist average for the 905? Who had the highest assist average? Who put Precious in there? Who had the highest assist number for uh, highest assist average for 905? Noel's right. Isaac got in there first. I, uh, Marquise Noel had the highest assist average for the 905. That is true. That is true. Noel, Noel. All right. Thank you, Chris. Uh, who had the high, second highest assist average for the Raptors? Who had the second highest assist average after IQ? Uh, after that, Dennis Schroeder is a good guess. That's not right, though. Uh, Scotty's right. Fiercey got it. It went in doubt. Just say Scotty. <laughs> Just say Scotty. Uh, it's pretty much his name is all over this piece of paper right here. Yeah, Scotty Barnes is right. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, next question. Who averaged the most steals per game for the Raptors? This is going to be a tough one because I did not do minimum. This will be a tough one. This one's going to be hard, y'all. Who averaged the most steals per game? Uh, Gary is not right. It is not right. No, nope, he didn't average the most steals. RJ's not right. Dennis is not right. Kobe Simmons. All right, she's looking it up. <laughs> she's looking it up. So Cool Cat's on the online. She got it in front of her because it's like she wouldn't know Kobe Simmons unless she looked at it. So yeah, she got it. It is Kobe Simmons. Technically, Kobe Simmons has the highest steal per game average for the Raptors this season on the main level. Not that's not 905. That's on the main level. Yeah, she's been watching Simmons. She can tell that he steals like a lot. Yeah, yeah. I, I, either way, Cool Cat, however you have that answer, it's cool. It's all good. Actually, you helped me move things along. <laughs> all right, who had this, uh, the most, uh, uh, the highest steals average for the 905? Yeah, yeah, she's been watching Simmons. Those long arms, Scotty has been out. Otherwise, he would get it. Yeah, that might be right. I think that's right. Uh, GFL, no, he did not have the highest steals average. Yeah, yeah. Um, Let's see. Winslow. No, Noel is not right. Uh, Noel is right. Yeah. Who said Noel first? David did. So David's going to get uh, Noel. Yeah. I still wish you guys would write in their full names. I know you're trying to be fast, but still. All right. Now for second in steals per game, there's a tie. And so there's two players that are tied for the Raptors for second in averaging and steals. So you can guess either one. I'll, I'll give points for either one of them. So there's two answers here. Mogi is not right. Jay, uh, Gary's not right still. He did not finish in the top three in, in steals. Scotty Wayne Barnes is right. Isaac will get that gun. But there's one more, a guy who is tied with uh, Scotty. It's very interesting. Bruce Brown is not right. Gary Trent is not right. Dennis is not right. RJ is not right. Uh, Grady is not right. Quickly is not right. Who had the, the tied with Scotty? He had the same average. Yeah, this is for uh, Raptors. Who had the second most uh, uh, tied with Scotty? Kelly Olenek is right. Cool Cat is there. <laughs> yeah, I know she's there. Cool Cat, it, it, you got it. It's it, it is Kelly Olenek. He had the uh, he had the same steals average as Scotty, which is very interesting. So he got about the same amount of steals per game as Scotty did for the season. Pretty cool. Kelly Olenek showing up on our trivia today. All right, the next one is who averaged the most three-pointers made for the Raps per game? Who would make the most threes on average per game? This is an important stat for the Raptors, yeah. Scotty is not right. Uh, Grady is not right. It'll be Grady in the future, but it's not. Uh, Quick is right. David, uh, or Cool Cat's in first with IQ. So Cool Cat's going to get that one. Uh, it is IQ. IQ had the average the most of uh, three-pointers made per game he played. Uh, who had the most three-pointers made per game for the 905? There you go. 905. Who had the most three-pointers made per game? Yeah, it's like, my internet's so slow. Dorsell? No. JFL's right. Fiercey got it. Fiercey uh, is right. JFL had the most three-pointers made at, uh, average for his team on the 905 is JFL. All right, second in three-pointers made per game. Uh, average uh, for Raptors second for free three pointers made per game average. Yeah. Uh, OG. No. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if you see, he takes a lot of them. That's why 
and he makes them because he takes a lot down there. Moji is not right. Scotty's not right. Uh, Kobe is not right. Quickly is not right. Who has the high, you know, first was quickly. Who's second? Quickly is number one. So who's the other one? Uh, three pointers made. Uh, yeah, Trevor, you put the picture in. I'll take that as an answer. In some ways, maybe y'all should be putting the pictures in. So, Trevor, yeah, you're going to get that one. It's a little unconventional. Commissioner Jay's getting in there and getting it. It's Gary. Gary had the second most three pointers made after IQ. Yeah, Grady will be on that list in the future, but he is not on the list as of right now. All right, we got still got four more questions. Uh, who averaged the most free throws made per game for the Raptors this season? Who averaged the most free throws per game? Uh, let's see. Grady's not right. Scotty is not right. It's not Scotty. It's Pascal. That's right. It's Pascal. fiercely has got that one. It's Pascal had the most free throws made per game. Uh, who had the most free throws made per game for JFL, uh, for uh, the 905? Yeah, that kind of makes sense anyway. You guys would probably get that. Who got the most free throws made at, per game? Yeah, JFL. Yeah, I said it. I'm so dumb. Either way. Fiercey's doing really well. Amit's not here, so she's going to separate from him uh, by the end of today. That's for sure. Uh, the next part of this is I actually have the next th three Toronto Raptors that average the most free throws made per game. So there's three different names here that you can get points for after this. Yeah, uh, let's see. Three, the, who are second, third, and fourth in free throws made per game? Cool Cat's going to say RJ. That's right. Cool Cat is right with that. RJ. Um, all right. Let me write it in. Uh, IQ. Yeah, that's right, too. So, Fiercy, you'll get that one. All right. And uh, RJ, G, G, T, J. Uh, oh, Cool Cat got the other one. Barnes. Barnes. There you go. Lots of points to get today. Lots of points to get, and I see that certain people are really cleaning up. All right, we got to keep going. We're almost through the trivia. It's a slog. In some ways, I won't do these these like this exactly in the future. You know, classic Jurassic style and different kinds of styles of trivia. In some ways, it's more fun, but we'd have to do the stat review. It's important to kind of understand who was doing what for what and what, you know. All right, so the next one is who averaged the most bl blocks per game for the Raptors? Who averaged the most blocks per game for the at Raptors? Uh, no, none of those are right so far. This is a. It's going to be interesting to see. It's an average. It's not total. Just so y'all know, it's whoever averaged the most blocks per game while they're out there. Once again, Porter is not a good answer today. Boucher um, is not on here. It's not RJ. It's not Precious. It's not Scotty. It's not Jakob. It's Mohamedou. Cool Cat's looking at the stats. Obviously, <laughs> she's got the she's got the page open. She's just reading them off because there's no way she would have got Kobe Simmons, and there's no way she would have known. Uh, it's possibly that uh, Mo, Mo 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 was the um the blocks leader. All right. Well, who was the 905 average blocks leader? Not total blocks, average blocks. Who is the 905 leader? On that note, <laughs> it's uh, once again uh, Mohamedou. Yeah. Seymour's got that too. I mean, he did block a lot. I mean, you saw it out there. It's weird because Chris is usually the leader of blocks on our team. Uh, who are the next two leaders in blocks per game for the Raptors after Mohamedou, uh, average wise? Who would be the next two on the list? Blocks per game. Yeah, she's well, she's got the page open. <laughs> Scotty's right. Uh, David, he is one of the leaders in blocks per game. Uh, and Jakob is the other one. Seymour's got that one. Okay uh wait that's the wrong place i'll write it there oh my gosh i'm gonna have to figure out how i can this is the last chicken scratch i'm gonna have to figure out it's gonna be taking me a, a bit to score it so the score won't go up right away i'm gonna have to read it all out and there's a lot of adding because <laughs> there's a lot of answers all right who averaged the most turnovers for the raptors average who averaged the most turnovers per game for the raptors this year Scotty is right. Fiercely got that one. Scotty did average the most turnovers. It sucks. But that's usage once again. Who averaged the most turnovers per game for the 905? That one's uh this one's maybe a little bit more tough to get. Who averaged the most turnovers per game for the 905? Mohamedou is not right. They had the average, average. It's not total. It's average per game. Like they come out there and they're gonna give this number, even if they only played two games. 
who had the highest turnover average for the 905. Mm -hmm. That's right. 905, not JFL. JFL did not have the highest turnover average for the 905. Yeah, there's there's a lot of players down there. Um, uh, Noel is a good guess. It's not Noel. Amari Moore's not right. Uh, Winslow's not right. It is somebody we've answered already uh, at some point. It's not to it's totally out of the blue. Kevin O'Banner is not correct. Um, yeah, you guys can just name 905 people. You'll probably get it. Dorsell. Why do you keep saying Dorsell? His name is Morsell. Miles Burns is not correct on this one. Uh, Jonte is not right on this one. Thank you for full assing it. Um, yeah, Dorsell. Who the hell is Dorsell? <laughs> Jade Jalen Del Delaire is not correct either. Um, you guys are dancing all around this. Drake Jeffries is not right. You guys are naming all almost all of them except for this one guy still. That's fine. Yeah, I know you guys didn't watch 905. I, I get it. I get it. Uh, Landon Kirkwood. Wow. Like, uh, you know what? I almost want to just give you points because that is a player that showed up for the 905 right at the end of the season. And he only played two games right at the end. And they, I mean, I barely even saw the guy. I don't even know what he looks like. Landon Kirkwood. That's crazy. You put that name in there. No, it's not Noel. It's not Winslow. It is somebody that was already named as one of the answers earlier. In some ways, I see Cool Cat is not jumping in on this one right now. Maybe she doesn't have the 905 stats in front of her. Who averaged the most turnovers per game average-wise for the 905 this year? It's not Winslow. It's not McCurr. It's not Na Noel. It's not Drake Jeffries. It's not Del Air. It's not Jonte. It's not Miles. It's not Daryl Morsel. It's not Kevin O'Banner. It's not JFL. It, it, it's it's uh, Nope, it's not DJ Carton. It is somebody you did call up. Kobe. Yeah, it's Kobe. And uh, Seymour, even though you half-assed it, I'll give it to you because we needed to be put out of our misery. It's Kobe Simmons. Kobe Simmons had the most steals per game average, but also the most turnovers per game average. Yeah. The other forward. The other forward. That's who it is. Uh, who were the second and third for the Raptors in uh, uh, average turnovers per game? Second and third after... Scotty Barnes, who had the, the most uh, after that. Pascal is not right as far as averaging. Gary Trent is not right. Who averaged the most turnovers after Scotty uh, on the team? Yeah, these are good guesses, but they're not right, either of them. Boucher's not right. Pascal's not right. Um, let me see. Yeah, I see the two names on there. It's not Dennis. It's not OG. It's not IQ. It's not Gary. Who had the second most out of that? And it's not Gary. Once again, it's not Gary, Trevor. Who had the second average, the most, second most and third most for the team? Actually, they're tied. That's why I put them both on there. McDaniels is not right. Thad is not right. Kelly Olenek is right. So, Trevor, you're going to get that. Trevor, yeah, that's right. Kelly Olenek, actually second in turnovers average. Uh, Precious is not right. Bruce Brown's not right. RJ Barrett is right. Yep, RJ is the other one. Cool Cat got it. It's our two Canada guys, actually, behind Barnes. And that's too bad. But a lot of that is just because they handle the ball a lot. Kelly's a hub, and he's going to pass the ball, and he gets turnovers when he doesn't – those idiots don't catch the ball. So it's kind of like that. Precious Malachi. Whoa, somebody answered Malachi. <laughs> All right, this is the very last question of today. Thank you for bearing with me on this ragamatag season stat review. And uh, this is the last one. Uh, who committed the most fouls for the Raptors this season total? Who committed the most fouls overall? Uh, yeah, who committed the most fouls this season for the Raptors? Grady's not right. Scotty's not right. No, it wasn't those guys. Uh, who committed the most fouls? Jonte? Yeah, that was pretty foul what he did, but uh, that's just one. Uh, Fierce, he got it. It's Jakob. Jakob had the most fouls this year, guys, and he didn't even play a big chunk of the year. That's kind of crazy. Uh, who had the most fouls for the 905 this in their season down there? Who had the most fouls for the 905? Yeah. Mohamedou's not right. Uh, this is crazy. Yeah, it's not Mohamedou. You would think it would be him. No, it's not him. This is I'm honestly, I don't even remember this being like this. It's crazy. It's not McCurr. It's not JFL. In some ways, it makes these stats are kind of making me think, okay, maybe this guy shouldn't be on our team next year. It's not Jonte. It's not GFL. Who committed the most fouls total on the 905 this season? Simmons is right again. Yeah, Simmons is an aggressive player. 
And if he's going to try and go get steals, he's going to foul people. So he had the most total fouls between the showcase season and the regular season for the 905. I added them together. So it wasn't like separated. And somebody's dealing with the two seasons and they have them all separated. It's annoying to do 905 stats because they have uh, the showcase season uh, separated from the regular season. You have to add them together. It's a lot of extra math to do the 905 stat stuff. So, yeah, Kobe Simmons is right. And, yes, uh, in some ways, let's see, uh, uh, Monique. Oh, I'm not done yet, Mo. I still got some more. I got one more question. Who got the second most uh, 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 fouls on the Raptors this season? Who got the second most fouls on the Raptors this season? Who got the second most fouls? on the Raptors this season. When in doubt, yeah, just say Scotty. Isaac got it. It's Scotty. All right, now we're done. Now we're done. Those are all the answers. Man, I don't know. That format's weird. In some ways, I probably won't ever do it exactly like that. It's kind of too predictable. In some ways, I mean, it's kind of interesting. I mean, do you guys feel like you learned anything about this season as far as things? Like, what were, what are your takeaways from the trivia just right now? Just any kind of feedback. Like, did you learn something that you're like, whoa, I didn't realize that about this season? In any kind of way, that'd be interesting. Most saying that uh, Jemais Ramsey won the G League championship last night, that they beat the main Celtics in the finals, the Oklahoma City Blue, and Jemais Ramsey's a big part of that. So there you go. That's a winner. And that's why we need to bring him back to the Raptors for next season. Uh, if we're going to pick anybody and bring them back, that's the guy I want to, because honestly, that's a big deal. That was fun. Okay. A few you thought that was fun. I like that. Very interactive. Yeah, the trivia's always been like that. It's been weird. We haven't done it in a while. I'm going to definitely do uh, better trivias more in, over the summer. But in some ways, I always do the stat review at the end of the season. And it's kind of like, uh, you know, this this was the way I wanted to do it this time. I wanted to integrate the 905 with it. And that kind that's different than the other times before. I would never put the 905 stats in there. Uh, Fiercely said, I'm surprised about some of the stats. Good stuff. Yeah, the thing I think overwhelmingly with the, the trivia is that Scotty Barnes, is in almost all the categories, has very high usage. And even though he, we had a season where a lot of different players were on different sides of things, we see some representation from both sides of the trade with uh, Pascal and Dennis showing up on some of these lists and IQ and Kelly and uh, uh, RJ showing up on some of these lists too. Yeah. Uh, Chris is saying this trivia over. So in the news, media is saying that player that player is not coming back for sure. Uh, Bruce Brown, Gary, uh, Malik Williams, but also, and I don't know, they also said Wara and Temple tells me big changes this offseason. Yeah, I mean, th that we need to continue to change because we can still improve a lot. Uh, I think that there's a lot of glaring holes on our roster right now that we still need to take care of and shore up, specifically with long arms, rebounds, and defensive kind of stuff. Some people are saying we need more playmaking off the bench, and that may be somewhat true. But I think on the down low, that's one of our biggest strengths right now is playmaking. We have a lot of guys that pass the ball really well and look for each other. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's going to kind of be sad to see who might leave this summer, Chris. And uh, Boucher is not on the list anywhere where you wrote in there. So that's very interesting. I see that Grayson Allen got signed yesterday to his extension. He's getting $70 million a year, uh, seventy million for four years. So you do the math. Grayson Allen is making under 20 million a year. Now, if we're gauging how Gary's worth is to Grayson Allen's new deal that he signed yesterday, well, we should be able to get Gary for maybe 17 million a year, something like that, or maybe 16. I don't know. That's a fair price, but that's right around where he's already making. Now, if he's trying to increase how much he makes and somebody else values him more, then maybe he has a better offer as an unrestricted free agent. So, but the 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 Allen signing yesterday by the Suns, it really bodes well for the price tag of Gary Trent Jr., at least in my eyes, because as a, a mischief brought up before, when he brought up Allen uh, about a month ago, he said that the stats are way better and that he's a better player than Gary. Well, if that's how much Grayson Allen's going to make, then Gary Trent should be kind of commiserate in that kind of the hierarchy of the pay. If Grayson's only going to make that much, well, Gary should probably not make more than him as far as the quality player between how good sh shooters and how steady they are. So it's very interesting. Very, very interesting. Uh, cool Cat saying, I'm surprised that Pascal still had so many stats. Pascal is the scoring leader and rebounds in the Pacers. So on both teams with traded at half is shocking. Yeah, most of the Siakam stuff is average, though. Like in the second part, I mean, he did have... um. 
he did have let me, ah, this is all chicken scratch now. I can't read anything on this now that I have all everybody's scores wrote in. Yeah, he did he did show up quite a bit on this trivia today. But you know what? That's because he's very high usage and uh, you know, he's gonna get a lot of that stuff. So very it is interesting. And, and you know, OG did not show up on this at all today. Precious did not either. Malachi did not. There, as some people said, there's no Grady. When's Grady gonna get something? Well, he, he didn't show up on any of the leaders either. So uh, Jordan's here. It's been a rough year, a uh, rough one this year, but I'm glad to reflect on the Raptors that put up numbers for us. There you go, Jordan. I appreciate that. That's very, yeah, yeah. I, it's kind of fun for me to do the check just to kind of like see from the inside. Okay, yeah, this makes sense. This happens. Yeah. Seymour's sad because he doesn't want Wara to leave. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, Trevor's saying, yes, I watched that game. Ramsey did score 23 points. So he was leading them, Trevor. Jemias. I'm telling you, there's this is a good kid, and he's he's an NBA player, and uh, you know him winning the G League shows that. There, uh, fiercely saying, "Hey, Chris, what media? What media? What media?" Uh, let's see, you still have the classic car of the day? Yeah, I'll do that right now. We'll do that right this second. Although you guys are filling it up underneath, it's like in some ways I want to get to the end of the the tr the car. You know, I, I, I did I miss anything at the beginning? There's a lot that I kind of like. Oh man, I should have done this. No, I didn't miss anything at the beginning. I don't think. Why did it cut the? part of the chat off oh well either way it's fine i'm just gonna do it half ass today i gotta figure out how i'll do the card with the trivia because it may be like a little bit of conflicting in some ways i should do the card before the trivia i think i don't know we'll figure it out all right here's the classic card today let me see all right y'all know the rules y'all know the rules definitely give me a full name on this i know y'all weren't writing full names on that oh this is gonna be really hard and i don't know if y'all will get this um should i show them the back of the card yeah i might even give you guys his first name because <laughs> this is crazy well i'll show the front of the card first all right first one to write in 100 points to your rapid freak trivia score this is crazy like honestly if y'all get this this is gonna be nuts <laughs> seriously it's a skybox card which is old school and that warriors jersey looks old look at that yeah i don't know if y'all are gonna get this I don't know if y'all are going to get this, to be honest. I might show you the back and give you his first name. Yeah. Who is that? Number 44 for the Warriors. This is really tough, honestly. Willie Green? That's not a bad guess, but it's not right. Um, I think I might show you the back. The back. I might show you the back of the card because this guy is like, look, I'll put him right up there. You can't even tell. Still, look at him. Ugh, my fingernail's dirty. What the hell? Uh, no, no. Clifford Rogier? No, Rogier had, had no hair. Fred Hetzel. That's not even a, a player's name. Who is that? Fred Hetzel? Is that the guy on I Love Lucy that's married to the neighbor? Um, let me see. All right. Let me show you the back. And on the back, I will give you guys his first name. So this will get you somewhere. I mean, I'm being really generous today because I think this is maybe the hardest classic card that we've ever had. Uh, Cliff Rogier is not right, guys. Uh, all right. See this? That's his face real close. Whoa, there's his name right there. You see his name? That's his first name. Let's see if you guys can get it from that. He's on, he's wearing a Bucks uh, shirt on the back. He's a, he's wearing Warriors on front, Bucks on the back. So who is that? L. Taylor. Lawrence Taylor, we're not doing football. Lawrence Taylor, uh, you see his name, it's right there. It's right there. Rick Barry, do you uh, you know who Rick Barry is? Come on now, Jeff Doughton Sr. That is funny. You know what? I'm giving him a dunk because that is hilarious. Because that's perfect. That was like perfect, Kareem. That is perfect. His name is Jeff, and you think that is Jeff Doughton Sr. That is so funny. Jeff Doughton Sr. did not play basketball, from what I remember. Oh wow, that's good. Yeah, 121. Kareem, let me bring it back. Sorry. Uh, I just wanted to do that. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff Doughton Sr. That's who he thinks it is. Jeff Doughton Sr. Uh, you got to spell it right. Okay. Because that's not right. You guys are not spelling it correct. Gayer is not his last name. <laughs> uh, Jeff Green is not right. Jeff Green's been playing a long time, but this is, this is even further back. This is like, I think this guy played I want to say this guy played in the late 80s, early 90s. There you go. Chris, yes, write it right. That's Jeff Grayer. Grayer. See his name up there? Jeff Grayer. Yeah, that's that's tough. Chris, you got it. Chris got it. Is Jeff Grayer. Grayer. 
yeah, he did not do jack shit in his career really at all. So it's like, yeah, that's Jeff Grayer, guys. Not Jeff Doughton Sr., Jeff Grayer. And the, being on the Bucks actually gives it away because he was more well-known for being on the Bucks than the Warriors. Anthony Tolliver? Chris Gatling? Yeah, these are not what this guy looks like. This guy does not look like those people. All right. Good job with that. Let me get back to the, see. This is the thing. This is why it's tough for me to do it this way, because now I have to go search for where I was in the chat from before with all the comments. And that's why it's a little bit tough. All right. Let me see. I was on Jordan. I remember that. Uh, Trevor saying, yep, he said that. I read that. Um, OK, here we go. Uh, David saying the morons. I don't know what that's saying that. Uh, MSJ saying a Raptors rapture. He's saying, I can't remember. What did they say? Where's the comment that Chris said that something about that? Okay. Oh, that's where the people aren't coming back. Yeah. Well, that's speculation. A lot of that speculation. I mean, I'll speculate too. If you want me to give my list of who I think is not going to come back, doesn't mean that, uh, it's right. <laughs> I mean, that's the way I look at it. Uh, are they reliable? I don't know them. No media is reliable. I think that's true. I think that's a, a good statement by David. And Chris is saying normally they are. Some of them are supposed to be reliable, and some of them still kind of do have credibility, but a lot of media does not anymore. That's absolutely the truth. In fact, media is not built for informing anymore. It's for shaping. Shape, uh, media is made by corporate pl pe people to shape attitudes and uh, the way people think about the world more than actually wanting to inform us. They want us to have our perception shaped. That's more important to them. In some ways, they will cover certain things a certain way because they really want you to look at it the way they want you to look at it. And that is that is a really big problem with what the media is right now because they're trying to shape perceptions. They're not necessarily trying to report facts. And in some ways, I am a very good example of this. I'm the, you know what, listen, I don't try and hide what I'm doing here. I say I spin this the right way. I say, oh, I'm going to be the, doing this for the positive. I, what I do here is a really good example all out in the open of what they do behind your backs and lying to you. I'm just showing you the way they do it. And say, so, yeah, if I my propaganda is positive Raptors propaganda, and some of it is delusional, some of it is I'm trying to shape perception of the Raptors, it's the same activities. It's the same exercises, except I'm trying to do it for a positive good reason. And that's the thing that's different. There's a lot of people out there that will try and shape your perception on things. And yeah, some of them want to shape your perception on certain politicians. Some of them want to shape your perception and your beliefs on certain issues. And that's the crazy thing about the media now. That's right. Yeah, normally they are. But I wish they were more at this point. And in some ways, not. Uh, David's saying, especially when it comes to covering the Raptors. You know, I feel like the mainstream media, the corporate media has gotten better. In some ways, the place where we've gotten worse is with the independent media like me. And it's not like me, but like the writing people like Raptors Rapture, Raptors Republic, uh, you know, people they are making YouTube stuff like he who shall not be named. I think that in some ways, the mainstream media like the Sportsnet with Daniel Michaud and the TSN crew and stuff, they're doing a better job of actually painting things in a more positive light. And being a little bit more sunshiny. I think that there was a whole era of scare tactic journalism. And it, it, it kind of infiltrated Raptors media, mainstream media on corporate media for a while. Because, you know, there, there is a little bit of manipulation through fear. And in some ways, they wanted to make us feel unsettled and weird for a while there. So they would say all kinds of shit. It was a little bit of gaslighting. There's stuff like Michael Grange saying that Masai is going to go to Washington, you know. Just bullshit. They would. They, they were very critical, and, and and but they've gotten better. They're listening. They know that Raptors fans are not all toxic, and like to kick the team while they're down. So they're being. They're taking more care in how they 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 do their reporting. In some ways, the way they used to do the reporting was a wave of influence on all the independent people being like them, and that's the fucking toxicness of it. The toxic started with the corporate coverage of the Raptors before. Uh, but they've chilled out. And now it's really the, the the independent people that are more toxic than the actual Sportsnet and TSN broadcasts at this point. It's very interesting how that flipped. But that's the thing. They are the leaders. They're the ones who set the, the, uh, the, the way, the tone. And well, these people are just know from what they were taught from all the negging and weird shit that Roger Sportsnet and TSN did over the last 10 years. So even when we were winning and successful, 
there was a lot of negative kind of negging our team on those corporate channels, but it's nicer now all of a sudden. I don't understand that. Maybe it's partly because of this channel and us making our voices heard as positive, loyal fans that love the team. And we just don't want to have it no more where people are coming at the team and being assholes like I just described. So it's, it's a weird thing right now. It's a very, very weird thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. Especially when covering the Raptors, it's not very reliable. It, it depends. It depends on who it is. Uh, David's saying the fact that they didn't mention Boucher in that list gives away the show. They they have no clue what they're talking about. Yeah, I have no idea. In some ways, you guys know I don't like to speculate in certain ways. And uh, I mean, but I can tell kind of what the writing is on the wall with each one of those guys. I really can. Uh, Chris is weird. In some ways, I think Chris is gone. I hate that, though. I hate that. In some ways, it's partly because of his Instagram this is making me think he's gone. And some of his Instagrams have seemed very isolated from being a part of the team and that he is kind of ready to move on. But I don't know. That's why I was trying to propose we should try and make Chris our Udonis Haslam. Because if we could do that, then, you know, he could be around for a while. That'd be awesome. Because I know for a fact that Boucher doesn't necessarily want to play for a team in the U.S. He really does kind of like being in Canada as a Canadian and in his own country. That, uh, you know, it's not told, it's much more attractive to be in Toronto uh, still with the team than in some ways to go somewhere else. That money and things like the team decides they're not really wanting to invest in him any further. Well, that makes things change in either way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Fiercely saying, if Gary comes correct with the price, I'm all in. But if it's exaggerated, nah. Yeah. I really, that, that 20 million is that threshold for me. I was worried he was going to try and get upwards towards 30. But now that I've heard Grayson's price, Gary should not make over 20. He should be making between 15 million and uh, like 17 or 18 million a year. Very similar to what he's making right now. In some ways, you could look at it this way. Did Gary deserve a pay raise from what he's done since the last time we gave him a contract? And probably not because the production and what he's doing is is pretty much similar to what he was doing when we first gave him this, this last contract. Uh, James is saying we should just re-sign him at reasonable price if there are no good free agent guards on the market this year. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's good to have around. He's useful. Don't get me wrong. But we don't want to overpay on him, especially because we know how consistency can be a problem with him. Uh, Chris is saying, but whatever. I'm not sure who goes, but I think there's going to be a lot of leaving, uh, a lot leaving. For the draft, I think we take Castle and uh, Missy. Those are my predictions. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to throw darts at a dartboard I can't even see. So I'm not even, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna uh, speculate that, but I, I think you're right. I think that half the team that we just had that finished up the season on Sunday is gonna be gone, and we're gonna we know that we know half of who's gonna be there. So it's kind of clear the ones that'll be going and the ones that are gonna be sticking around. And we're gonna have next year. Abaji will be coming back next year. He's under contract, so uh, he's another one added to that seven. There's seven that I know for sure will be on our team next year. And if we have two draft picks. If we have a couple of free agent signings, if we re-sign, maybe Gary, we re-sign Chris. I don't know. We're going to have to see. David's saying, if you did highest three-point percentage, I bet Grady would be near the top of that list. Yeah, that might be true. That might be true. I mean, I could go look at it. You want me to go look at it real quick? I could tell you right, right off the bat. Let me go see. It could be very well right that Grady is the leader of our team in uh, three-point field goal percentage. Uh, let me see. La, 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 la. Bear with me. I will find it and tell you. Um, no, actually, he isn't first there either. Uh, number one on that is Emmanuel Quickly. He shot 39.5% from three. Uh, Gary's second, 39.3. RJ's third, 39.2. OG's fourth, 37.4. And Grady is fifth in three-point field goal percentage for the year. So he was actually fifth. Now you got to realize the first half of the year he stunk it up, and it wasn't late. It was until later that he started shooting way better. So he had to make up some of the bad stats earlier. Uh, cool Cat saying, "To be honest, I'm so glad the season is over. I was devastated the level uh, the level as when Vince was no longer on the Raptors. Still angry. Laugh out loud. You, yeah, yeah. I know that in some ways I, we didn't see you as much near the the losing streak because I get it. You just you, you're 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 saying you're saying a word like devastated about it." Yeah, I mean, it's not easy. It's not easy, especially doing this channel, doing doing it during a 15-game losing streak. It's not easy. Let's just put it that way. Uh, G saying, I can live with Castle. I'm not well-versed in this draft, but Castle stood out, and I am an Edie fan. 
His interview made me a fan, and the fact that he only started playing six years ago. Yeah, I mean, I, do you guys want me to scout Castle right now? I never did scout him. I could do a scout. Uh, let me just look at Castle real quick. Castle is, uh, what is his, what is his first name? Y'all keep just putting Castle in. I don't fucking know his first name. What is his first name? I don't know his first name. Either way, maybe I shouldn't do this. Y'all request a full name scout if you want it. Uh, and I know that there was some ch chat stuff at the top that is gone now. And this is part of the reason why ah, I need to not have so many comments before the chat because I won't read them later. It's too bad. So whatever you guys wrote up top, if I did not read it, I apologize. In some ways, I got to adjust back to the Raptor Freak trivia uh, format so that I don't miss it. Now, I'm not going to be on for too much longer. We're at an hour right now, and I do want to shorten my time. So we're not going to just hang out here and talk too long. Um, all right. Where am I on the chat? I'd want to make sure I didn't miss anything. All right. I think I read that. I read that. All right. We'll just go back down here and we'll just go from here. Um, okay. I did miss this stuff. Okay. Fiercely saying I'm looking for the Messiah's presser. Yeah, that should be either today or tomorrow. I think Mo uh, Grady, uh, Monique said Grady needs more media work on the mic. Laugh out loud. Okay. Yeah, I agree with that. The problem with Grady is that he's talking like this. He's like, yeah, I have the really good season. And then I was like going in there and then I, and then I was going to shoot the shot. And I was like, saying, like, why are you not talking into the microphone, Grady? You're like way back here. You're turning your head and like the mic's nowhere near your mouth and we can't hear your ass. So get a little bit more media training on how to talk into the microphone, Grady Dick. Because you did a very poor job at your exit interview yesterday. It, it yeah, I didn't. I, I'm gonna go back and watch them again today, and we'll talk about them more more in depth tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'm not ready to talk about the exit interviews. In fact, I want to kind of do them all together with Darko and Masai when they finally go, and then I'll talk about everybody's interviews. So I know that you guys are anxious to bring them up and go over them, but to be honest, I did not watch any of them except for Grady and IQ. I've not seen Scotty's. RJ's or, or any of the other guys uh, I've only seen IQs and Grady's and in some ways I'm not prepared to talk about it right now uh let's see uh Chris is saying anyway we should really talk about Cameron Brink's fashion sense who cares about the NBA now boring these WNBA players however yeah you know I saw a little bit before I started working last night of um uh, WNBA uh, players showing up for the draft and Caitlin was wearing some crazy mini skirt and look really like fire. And uh, I know that that's maybe something that's cool about the WNBA draft is it's similar to the NBA draft, like Grady putting on that red suit where they, they have looks and they come in and they treat it like that. So that's kind of a cool aspect to get that with the, the females and see the kind of the fits and what, what they're dressed in and stuff to take their walk to join the WNBA. So very, very cool. In some ways, that's signifying that it's more of a spectacle, more interest for the WNBA draft, that the, the ladies are getting really gussied up and coming in there and uh, dazzling with their fit. And uh, that's very similar to the NBA draft at this point, where they have people are very much doing that the same way. Yeah, very cool. Uh, I'll have to go and look. You know what? Let me go look at the draft uh, right now. I'll react to who got drafted where. Uh, in the in the positions we see Caitlin Clark got drafted by Indiana no surprises there that does not surprise me in the least that Caitlin did actually get drafted by Indiana that's good uh, second Brink Brink got drafted second by um, is that the, the Sparks I'm not sure I don't know that symbol let me let me like open it up and have it listed I don't want to just look at the tracker okay yeah Caitlin A plus is what uh, ESPN's given on that one for the Indiana Fever, got an A plus for drafting Caitlin, Celeste Taylor, and Leilani Correa over the whole draft. Oh, the Sparks got Cameron Brink, Rikea Jackson, and Mackenzie Forbes. They have three three rounds in the WNBA draft. Apparently, uh, Coco's former team, James Wade's former team, uh, Chicago Sky got Camilla Cardoza, center from the South Carolina uh, champions. Aren't they the champions? Didn't South Carolina win? Yeah, so they got the center from them in the third pick of the draft, uh, Camilla. Um, let's see. Uh, I, Aaliyah, our, our girl from UConn, she went to the Mystics. So she's on the Washington team now. So Aaliyah Edwards 
has joined the Washington Mystics. That's pretty cool. Uh, it looks like uh, Atlanta went international with their draft to, uh, yesterday, getting two Australians and an Italian. Very interesting. The uh, the Va Las Vegas Aces got four picks uh, with Fair Daisha Fair from Syracuse as a uh, 16 picks, their top pick. Let me see. I might just skip through here. I don't need to do all the teams. I'll just do the ones that kind of look interesting as far as if I see somebody's name jump out. Um, where did Angel Reese go? Did she get drafted? She probably did. Okay, I don't see it. I don't know. Either way, cool. WNBA uh, draft, bigger spectacle, bigger event, more attention. Sometimes in the past, this thing would just be done in a ballroom and no TV camera, and they just do it. And nobody cared. Nobody cared about the WNBA draft. They care about it now. And that's good, good progress is what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, Smooth Sand, it's being reported that Canada expects Fernandez to be their head coach through the Olympics. His contract stipulates that regardless of his NBA status. Yeah. Well, he knows his responsibilities. It's a weird thing. In some ways, being an NBA coach and being an Olympic coach is tough. It's just tough. And balancing that is 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 tough. In some ways, that was a real problem when we had Nick Nurse's both. That was not a good thing because it blew up in our face in the end when Nick wasn't going to be our coach for the Raptors anymore. Yeah, he had to leave Team Canada too, bastard, butthole face. This That's what I worry about. It's like Jordy, in some ways, he's such a good coach. He, he needs to get his dreams and become an NBA head coach. But right before the Olympics, is just sucks. It just sucks. I wish in some ways he'd wait, but I get it. You got to take the opportunities when they come to you. Uh, and it's it's just annoying. He will do his commitment. But I, you know what? In some ways, I'm going to be watching him to see just how well he's doing. If he's distracted, he's not putting as much effort into the Team Canada stuff this summer because he's trying to build a culture for a new NBA team that he's coaching. Ah, oh, man, it's it's just a not ideal situation. In some ways, in nefarious ways, this could be the way that some people are hurting Team Canada's program on the down low, is to hire Jordy as a head coach in the NBA. And uh, I just don't like it all around in some ways. Uh, Chris is saying, at, at David, yeah, no Boucher is telling. I'm still not sure why he was played so little this year. Well, I mean, he, it's not that he wasn't played so little. You guys, can I explain the, the situation with Chris better? Chris is a vet. Chris is a role player. Chris is not a starter. Chris is like Otto Porter Jr. You need to start thinking about Chris in that way. He may have been regular rotation and every game kind of guy for the Raptors in past years, but that is not the way this is trending. He's trending like he's going to be more like Thad and Otto and Garrett. And there's nothing wrong with that. In some ways, he's a, a solid pro break in case of emergency. In fact, I still value that a lot because he's got a unique talent. But that does not mean that he needs to play every single fucking game. And that was the problem with all the people who say, free Chris Boucher, all this bullshit. It's stupid. Get over yourself with the people that are all worried about Chris Boucher and how much he plays. The coach decides this. In some ways, if Boucher's game does not totally fit the way Darko wants to pass every which way, that may be a big part of it right there. Do you know Chris as a very good passer in a system like what Darko's running? As far as we got to push it around all over the place. It's going to be a decision between Olenek and Boucher. Who do you think he's going to play? Because Kelly's a fantastic passer. He finds cutters. Have you ever seen Chris hit a cutter going to the basket like with a quick pass? No, you have not. Because Chris is not really an assist guy. So this is a big part of the reason why uh, Chris Boucher was not developed as much in our system. And that, yeah, he probably will be leaving this summer. But it, it, you got to understand this. Uh, some of the people that were going crazy about Chris not playing didn't even realize he was hurt for the last part of the year. They just thought that Darko had a grudge against him or didn't like him or something. It was like, why is he not playing him? And some of them are using it against Darko. Y'all don't realize that Chris Murray hurt him in the, the Portland game the last time he played and put him out for the rest of the season? It had nothing to do with Darko benching him or anything. I know y'all know this. I know Chris knows this, but this is the thing. Some of the casuals are piling on. Oh, they didn't play him during the middle of the season. And then he didn't play him at all. At the end of the season. Why is Chris Boucher not playing? Well, you're not paying attention. He's hurt. He has an MCL tear in his knee. That's why he's not playing. So understand just because you're a certain player at a certain point in your career, you go up and down. And Chris went from all the way at the end of the bench for golden state, came to Toronto in the championship year 
and set at, at the end of the bench, didn't do jack shit in our championship year. And then he slowly became a role player and did role player stuff off the bench for us. He never really was a starter ever. And well, in some ways, this is the arc of NBA careers. It's not anything's guaranteed. It's not like, oh, you're just going to continue and continue. And then you're going to be a starter. And all of a sudden, Chris is 40 minutes a game. No, he's a bench player. And in some ways, the, he's just like Otto, Thad, and Garrett at this point in his career. So people need to realize that about him. I mean, I love the guy. And he's a great Raptor in the history of our Raptors. But it's careers change. And they change like that. Just like Darko said, nothing's granted or guaranteed. You got to keep working because you will get bounced out of this league, especially if you're unprofessional, not fundamental, and you're not doing things right. Yeah. So I hope that illustrated a little bit, Chris. I think the point that's most important is you do not know Chris Boucher as a passer. So if Darko's wanting everybody to be a good passer in the system, Chris is not going to work in it. You know, that's part of it. In some ways, we don't see Gary setting people up very much either. And that may be part of the reason why he's on his way out. Also, uh, Cool Cat saying Gary should not be on the team anymore, not improving. Gary's replacement, Grady, is better and cheaper. Uh, Gary turned out to be way below Norman Powell's level. That was the replacement. You know, I won't totally agree with you, Cool Cat, but some of what you're saying is exactly right. Uh, I don't know if I think Gary could be on the team still and it'll work. It's just the money. It, 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 I don't know if he, you could say he's not improving. He's improved in subtle ways. Like there are things he's been doing in the last few years that are subtly better. In some ways, Darko asked Gary to change his game completely this year. The way that Gary played this year compared to the way Nick had him playing last year is night and day. So in some ways, we got to give Gary a little credit. For having to do things a lot more different, like instead of being able to do a lot of uh, moving himself with the ball and dribbling around and stuff like that, Darko did not want that at all. So a lot of the the getting free, the way Gary got free last year, was not there this year. It was really like you got to catch and shoot and pass it around the horn, and just you know if you get that shot, you got to take the shot, and you're not going to get a dribble if you you're lucky. The guy the defender comes at you and you sidestep him, and you get a dribble then. But for the most part, you're catching and shooting. And in some ways, Gary's a rhythm shooter, and that's part of the problem. He has to do dribbles or little spins, and then he gets in his shot and he makes it. If he's cold, and he, I mean, he's, if he's just cold shooting, like where the ball pounces to him, he doesn't have anywhere to move. you got to shoot it right away because the defense is coming right on him. He's not as good a shooter then. He's a rhythm shooter. And in some ways, the way the offense with the passing around, he can't get the rhythm for himself. Now, if he has the guys on the team passing to him, they understand how to build the rhythm for him through the pass, and he's more likely to make it, that'll be great. And that's part of reps. That's part of learning better. That's like, uh, Gary, you give him the pass a certain way, boom, you know his rhythm, and he hits it. And he doesn't need a dribble because the passer's uh, acumen and the way they send energy sends the rhythm with the pass. And then Gary doesn't need to dribble it himself. So th there's a couple of different ways we could do this with him. And uh, I don't know. In some ways, he doesn't fit Darko's system. It is true. Now, I don't like you saying that he's below Norman Powell's level. I would say this. They're similar. They're not much different. If you really want to get nitpicky, yeah, sure. We could say Norman Powell was better than Gary during his period of time. They were similar role, and they did a lot of similar things. Gary's a better three-point shooter than Norman. He is. That's just the damn truth. Now, Norman's a better defender in some ways. And in some ways, Norman is more reliable. Also, I would say that also. But yeah, that, I mean, I, I don't see it as like a, 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 a downgrade. I think we kept that level pretty good from Norman to Gary. It's just a different flavor slightly. Uh, so Smooth saying the Team USA bringing their Avengers team. Wow. Yeah, there's a lot of noise about who's coming to play for them. And yeah, we'll have to see what's going on. Team USA is unreal. Yeah, that doesn't mean anything. Honestly, they get a whole bunch of older players that just want to go for their last shebang to go to the Olympics, that may be a folly. That may be a backfire. Because honestly, this is not the way to win FIBA, is by building an all-star team. Some people will say, oh, dream teams will always win. Well, I don't know. Team concepts beating uh, talent at this point in basketball around the world. Uh, cool Cat saying, I don't mind the losing streak. It was the trading of my favorites that devastated me. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I get it. I get it. We knew the writing was on the wall. And it's kind of crazy, Cool Cat, because in, in the year or so before, we built up to this to a degree, and we kind of did things to get ready for it just in case. I know that we talked about it a lot, and I was saying, yeah, if we have to say goodbye to Pascal, I have to be ready. 
And I have to start thinking about it because this is a strong possibility this year. Uh, let's see. Uh, Kareem saying Scotty's praise for Garrett Temple yesterday just goes to show that his presence is well felt. Scotty loves the dude and Temple is a great mentor. Now we just got to get Temple to teach Scotty how to dress. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of people were saying that. As Garrett's a very snappy dresser. Scotty, yeah, I love that. I love that. I'm one, once again, I'll do more of the going over what they said and stuff. I only have seen sound bites. I haven't watched the whole interviews yet. And I do want to see the other guys first. I want to see the front office and I want to see the coach and see what they're going to do. And then we'll, we'll probably do the Thursday think tank on this. And you guys can actually call me and, and we'll talk about it. Tomorrow will be wild, wild card Wednesday. I don't know. I'm going to figure it out. I'll figure it out, but uh, I'm not totally prepared to do the exit interviews yet right now. Uh, Smooth saying the only solace is FIBA basketball is like 90s. So gold to the U.S. is not assured. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I, I really feel like the USA where the way they build teams is archaic at this point. The way they used to do it is fine because it's overwhelmingly going to just kill people and beat them. But at this point, things are way different in the basketball world internationally. And I think they're dumb if they're going to do this. Like, if they actually get Joel Embiid to play for them, I don't think they will because he's injured right now. And he probably needs to rest this summer because, I mean, oh, he's overused, obviously. You get put him on Team USA this summer, that'd be crazy. Yeah, whoever shows up, I'm not scared of them. Team Canada will beat the U.S. again at the Olympics. Go ahead and bring your little dream team out and make it older. Seriously, bring all the old guys out. Get Steph, get LeBron, get Kevin. I don't give a shit. In some ways, that'll help the other teams, especially the older guys. Yeah, the experience will be there, but in some ways, there's issues. Yeah, the laziness. Those, some of those players are very lazy in their older age right now. Let's just put it that way. Uh, let's see. Uh, cool Cat saying, I hope Scotty Barnes gets that last spot on Team USA. They need his defensive skills. I hope not. I do not want that. That's the same kind of shit like I don't want Jordy to be the coach of the Brooklyn Nets. That's just too much. In some ways, Scotty's hurt right now and we need him to rehab and i don't want him going to the olympics and playing for team usa in the middle of summer uh, in a lot of ways a lot of different ways the only reason why i want him to go is because he would want to go and want to be there but if it conveniently works out that he does not make the team i won't be upset about that let's just put it that way uh fiercely say team usa is stacked but so are we i'm extremely confident uh, I anticipate drama on the U.S. side anyway. That's another thing. I don't think Scotty's going to get in there if all these old heads are tr jumping in and wanting to have one last hurrah. It's not very likely Scotty's going to be on Team USA. Let's just put it that way. In some ways, he did not play most of the last of the season because of his injury, so he's not fresh in the mind. And also, in some ways, the U.S. has more of a priority to promote people like Anthony Edwards and Paulo Benchero, obviously, because they were on the team last year. So I, I don't think I, I hold your breath on Scotty being on the team. That'd be weird. If he does be on the team, I'm not totally going to be liking it just because I don't want anything crazy to happen with Scotty while he's playing for Team USA that will affect his Raptor season. And in some ways, that's part of it, too. That's part of it, too. Uh, let's see. Uh, G saying breaking news. Porter allegedly owned a FanDuel VIP account that wagered millions of dollars from 2021 to 2023. That's Jonte Porter. Yeah, full, don't have asked me now. <laughs> you mean Otto Porter? <laughs> Otto did it too? <laughs> All right, let me see. I want to see this breaking news that you're bringing up here. Where, who's saying this online? Who's talking about Jonte online? Let me see. Is it on uh, ESPN? Let me go look at ESPN. Uh, I don't see it. I don't see it. Well, it, wherever you got it from, I don't know the source. I will believe it because it makes sense, G. It makes sense. I mean, financial genius, my ass. All right. He's been wagering millions of dollars on sports from for like two years before he came back. What a dumb ass. Like, so stupid. What a dumb, dumb guy. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Fiercely saying Chicago Sky has the Twin Towers, Cardoza and Angel Reese. So the Sky got Angel Reese. Why didn't I see that on the list? I looked at it, and I was like, where's Angel Reese? I don't see her. Um, I don't know. In some ways, I'm having a hard time getting everything figured out today. <laughs> it's all haphazard and all over the place. I don't know. Either way, Angel Reese went to the Chicago Sky. Okay, good to know. Good to know. MSJ saying, whoa, is Porter going to prison? I don't know. In some ways, his life's already ruined. Uh, let's see. G saying, but the account is saying it did not accept wagers on the NBA. This is even crazier. 
okay, where are you getting this information, G? Why don't you give me the source so I can go look at it myself? Uh, let's see. Kareem's saying, when it comes to Olympic basketball, Canada will match up very well against the USA. Laugh out loud. LeBron James getting a bronze and then Kobe having to save them four years later with the Redeem team. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you could think about the history of some of these guys before with these older guys that may come back is not totally successful. And that, that's one of the funny things. He brought up the Redeem team. Yeah. Uh, Chris is saying, as women are concerned over looks, overly so, the NBA, uh, WNBA ladies are something they might see as an interest. Not trying to be sexist, but it just seems to be reality. Let me know, ladies, if I'm wrong. I think you're looking too deep in this. I think that it's a very happy event. And just like somebody would go to a gala, a Met gala or something like that, they want to get gussied up and look good. And it's nothing negative about this in any kind of way. You don't have to look at them as sex objects. You don't have to look at them like in this way. I think that it's great because it shows equality between the two sexes, between the NBA and the WNBA. The vibe of the WNBA draft last night was more like an NBA draft ever in the history of the WNBA. And that's that's good progress, because in some ways we want equ equ equality. We want equality. That's the most important thing. So that's the way I look at it. Uh, Smooth saying, where is the Porter stuff being reported? I don't see it either. That's what I'm saying. If y'all going to bring me stuff, bring me sources so I can go look at it too. Uh, Fiercely saying, sorry, Chris, I don't understand your question. Are you asking me if we cons are concerned with looks and how other perceive us? Yeah, I, I don't know. I think he's going too specific and too deep on this. My point earlier was I noticed, and I know this may be in true in the past too, that there's a lot of like very much getting very fancy dressed up to go to the draft, whether you're a man or a woman in the NBA or the WNBA. It's not a gender thing. It's not either one. It's equal. It's the same. It's the same kind of stuff. And that's cool. You want to look good on your big night. So when you take a picture with the commissioner, you look fantastic. And that's that's the thing that's the most important about the whole thing about appearance and the way they're dressed and stuff. I think the buzz and the the hype around the WNBA draft last night was more like the, the NBA draft than ever but this year. A lot of it was Caitlin Clark and the other ladies that came in this season. Yeah, uh, let's see. Um, uh, cool Cat saying players in the WNBA bring their personalities. Some are fashion enthusiasts. Some are singers, uh, etc. Bring who you are to your game is acceptable. Makeup, hair, nails, heels, uh, fab outfits, bring it all. I mean, the guys are doing the same thing. You know, these guys are fashion plates. I mean, Grady's whole idea to do the weird red suit. You know, these guys, Scotty, think about Scotty's white fit that he wore when he got drafted. You know, it's it's a very much a, a similar action on both sides and a similar reason for why they do it. They want to look good on their one of the biggest nights of their life. That's what it is right there. Yeah. Google John T. Porter News. OK, you can't even just give me a source. I can't just like, all right, John T. Porter News. I'll do exactly what he's saying. Uh, it's breaking, breaking daily hive. Um, all right. Th th this is the newest one. Action Network. What? I don't even know. I, I don't trust that site. I don't know them. I've never heard of them before. Um, Daily Hive. I'll look at the Daily Hive. That's one I more trust more. Oh, it's Adam Lascaris. I, I don't trust that guy. That guy's a fucker. Um, let's see. Currently the center of the major NBA spitting scandal, according to the published uh, on Action Network. See, this is Action Network. He's getting his source from the one place from before. Porter held a VIP account with FanDuel in Colorado, placing millions in sports wagers from 2021 to 2023. He did not place any bets on the NBA or college basketball. Uh, I don't know. That's the only new thing that's on here, really. Otherwise, it's kind of just the same bullshit uh, churned up again. So basically, he did do sp sports betting, but he didn't bet on basketball at all. That's what it's saying. Uh, most saying W stream Lex keep at it. Always good times. Go Raptors approaching a uh, Raptor freak uh, family crew strong. That's right. Have a great day. Monique from Tom Duke and fiercely saying Lex was Shaq injury prone when he played and bead somewhat has the same body type, but is always out. No, they do not have the same body type. I will say that right now. They did not have the same body type. Shaq was pretty durable. He did not get hurt very often. He was more like LeBron. He was out probably about the same amount as LeBron is out, in and out. Uh, actually, he's out less than LeBron. Shaq was extremely durable. I don't think that he missed big parts of his career at all. He played a lot. And, like, I don't even, I, I can't even think about when Shaq would be hurt. 
Like I would never ever see Shaq sitting on the bench in street clothes hardly ever, you know. So no, he is not injury prone. And he did not miss very many games in his career. He played a lot over his career. I mean, I can go look at it. Let me go look at it. We can go look at Shaq straight up. And we will look and and we will tell each other, tell it, I'll tell y'all, Shaq, how how much he made uh, as far as games in his career when he played. He all right, yeah. His first two seasons in the league, he only missed one game, 81 games, 81 games, 79 games. Uh, his last season in Orlando, he did miss about 30 games. And then he missed 30 games in his first season in L.A. But for the most part, oh, okay, there are some seasons where it's kind of wacky, although it's split up because he played on different teams. I should look at the total. 61. I mean, later on, he was not as uh, important when he was on the teams after L.A. I mean, Miami was kind of important. I mean, I would say this. Maybe they're similar. Maybe they're similar. But I don't feel like Shaq was injury prone. I don't have that label for him. I've never really thought about it that way. Uh, Cool Cat saying, Scotty on Team USA would be a great experience for FIBA style play. RJ said Coach Darko style on Raptors is FIBA style already, so it's easy for him to adjust. Yeah, but that's not the way the U.S. plays. See, they're so arrogant. They're not playing a FIBA style when they come out there. They're playing against a FIBA style. Steve Kerr and them, they're not playing a FIBA style. They're playing an all-star game style is what they're playing is usually the style they're playing. They're playing like they're the all-star team, the NBA all-star weekend. And in some ways they got to try, but that kind of play does not usually, yeah, they're not playing a FIBA style. Their offense is not FIBA. (laughs) It's just, I'm a superstar and I'm going to beat you with talent is what they're not playing a team game. They're like not, and they're an anomaly in the whole FIBA world. That's not going to help Scott learn how to play uh, on Darko system. He won't get the ball, he, first of all. And second, he's going to be – you know what? They'll use him if they put him on Team USA. He'll be a glue guy that does all the dirty work, that does all the stuff like rebounding, and maybe he'll just like pass it to everybody else. He won't score at all himself. And uh, I'm just saying, and it's very likely he'll be one of the last guys on the bench, and he probably won't get to play a whole lot also. That may be part of it too. I just don't – I don't think it's a good idea. Not this cycle. Let's let some of these old heads retire and go off in the sunset. If they really want their last hurrah, let them get it this year for the Olympics. Maybe Scotty will be on the next Olympic cycle in four years from now. That may be more realistic, especially since he may have more all-stars and more uh, awards from the league that make it more likely he'll be on the team. Right now, he's going in there against LeBron, Steph, Kevin Durant. All these motherfuckers want to be on the team again for one last time. He's not going to make the team. Trust me, he won't. They'll put Paulo on that team before him. And in some ways, Paulo is the same role as him. And uh, they'll put Anthony Edwards on there before him because those guys were on the team last year. And they're going to take all the guys from last year, and then they're going to add old-ass guys to that team, and they're going to cut out people like Brandon Ingram and uh, maybe uh, Brunson and Hart and those guys. Yeah, that's what's going to happen is those old guys are going to come in, and they'll take a bunch of the guys from last year. Uh, Let's see. Shaq was a real baller, and Beat is a fake-ass bitch. That's a pretty good comment. Yeah, y'all, no more comments, please, because I do want to get out of here right now. I really, really do. I'm at 90 minutes now, and this is too much. It's too much. I re- We're really going to have to be strict with the cutoff. In fact, if I see a cutoff, I'm not going to read any comments after it coming up soon because it's just going to be – there's too much. There's too much. Uh, and I do want to start working on other things other than uh, this channel all the time because I do have a lot I have to do. Uh, let's see. Uh, Monique has got my cutoff right there. I th- appreciate that. Uh, let's see. Chris is saying, uh, in chat, Lex needs to do stuff. He just wrote that uh, like uh, nine minutes ago. Thank you. <laughs> Amit's here. Hey, you missed the you missed the trivia, Amit. There were tons of points. Yeah, there were tons of points. I'll add it up, and I'll, I'll po- post it in the comments after this. Chris is saying, at Fiercy, if the WNBA can leverage the glamour, uh, last night's orange carpet like the Oscars, girls will come to see that they can be feminine and, and badass on this court at the same time. No? I think you're reading too deep in this. In some ways, I get what you're saying. You have good intentions, but I think people could already do this. I think in media, there's a lot of like m- movies and TV where there's characters that are like this. So I, in some ways, the, the WAA can reinforce this. And maybe this is a deeper thing and it's important to think about. But in some ways, I think you're going too deep on this. In some ways, it's just what it is. It's just take it as surface level. And yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, stereotypes and thinking, oh, feminine women can't be strong. Yeah, yeah, I guess you're right. It's kind of breaking that. 
Uh, Fiercely saying, yes, Lex, you're right. It's equal now. And draft night is very special. A chance for them to show their personality. I'm into fashion. So notice Caitlin had a nice Prada suit. Angel's dress was fire. There you go. There you go. As much as it's like they're coming this way, the men are going towards the fashion too. I feel like the fashion has gotten more and more important to the men's draft also, <laughs> which is weird. I mean, they've always worn some colorful suits, but now like things like Grady happening and stuff is very interesting. Uh, Cream saying, hey, Lex, I forgot to give you an award. Cal Ripken Award for the most consecutive YouTube streams. This stream has brought a whole community together, and this channel is more reliable than CP24. That's a very kind uh, compliment uh, from you, uh, Kareem Thomas. And to be uh, talked about like Cal Ripken Jr., wow. Yeah, that's an Iron Man from, uh, from the baseball world. And in some ways, I want to be Morris Peterson. I'll be Morris Peterson, somebody like that that just shows up all the time. And I appreciate that. That was a very nice comment. Uh, Fiercely saying, oh, yes, Chris, absolutely. It's also empowering and motivating. Thanks for looking up Shaq's injury, Lex. Yeah, in some ways, it doesn't. It's, it's early on. He was great, but later on when he's older, yeah, he had more injuries then. Uh, let's see. Chris is saying, I think the WNBA is going to now explode. After last night, lots of girls are going to be playing basketball this summer. Not sexist. I'm uh, not being that, Just, but lots of girls are asking to join up today. Yeah, this is a good effect. I don't think that that's what you're saying. It's just in some ways I like to take things surface level, and I don't want to get too political sometimes. I have a tendency to do that. And in some ways I don't want to make last night political in any kind of way. I just want the you say, you know what, that was awesome event for the people involved. And I'm very happy for them. And congratulations on being WNBA players. That's what I would say there. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, Trevor saying, I'll, I put a link into the live coverage of Raptors with Coach Darko. OK, so he's in there right now. That's another reason why I need to get the fuck out of here, because they're doing the, um, the, the press conference with Darko right now. Uh, you're not feeling well, Amit? Well, I hope you feel better. Chris is saying, Lex, you should have a hard cut off. We can just talk to ourselves in the chat after it ends. You don't have to read them after all. I know. I should be more like Raptors tonight. <laughs> I'm going to say, not trying to keep this going, but I like I, 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 uh, uh, Edwards' outfit. Cool. I'm going to have to go look at it. I didn't see anything last night. It's really bad. You want to alley-oop to Kareem? All right, I'll do that real quick. Uh, 122. I appreciate uh, that for him, Fiercy. And uh, get well soon, Amit. Uh, Stargate saying, in my opinion, both Scotty and Zion should be on the U.S. Olympic team. Both have games perfect for the international style of play. Now, that may be totally true. But once again, there's people buttoning into the line and trying to get there. Uh, and Amit saying, thank you, Fiercy. Yeah, not political at all. It's just a lot of fun. Yeah, it's all good. It's it's not really political. It's more about sociological or, or like uh, gender role kind of stuff. And in some ways, that is political in today's world. Yeah, girls just want to have fun. That's right. That's right. Cindy Lauper. You hated that song? I like that song. She's not bad. Cindy Lauper, uh, a good 80s artist. All right, let me just get out of here. I don't have much to do anymore. I don't, I'm don't. i not going to do the Instagram stories. I'm not going to do anything else. We'll cover it more. Oh, there is one more thing I do need to do. It is a birthday today. There's a couple birthdays today. First of all, happy birthday to Walt Williams, the wizard. Early uh, Raptor. Walt Williams was a, a high scorer for us. He was the second leading scorer after Damon Stoudemire in our, uh, around our first couple years as an expansion franchise. So happy 54th birthday, Will, Walt Williams, the wizard, Walt Williams. And he's not the only one today, guys. I'm going to have to say a happy 49th birthday to Keon Clark. Keon Clark's birthday is today. Of course, Keon was in prison uh, not too long ago. I think he's out at this point. But he was in an Illinois prison for a good chunk of the 2010s. So uh, happy birthday, Keon Clark, 49 years old today. And happy birthday, Walt Williams, uh, 54 today. So two uh, old Raptors getting their birthdays today. Two very pretty well-known Raptors right there. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Uh, one last thing. Wouldn't be surprised if uh, Blank agreed to play uh, LeBron. Yeah, they're already saying LeBron's probably going to want to play. Or whatever. And then trying to put Bronny on there too. Yeah, they're just trying to do too much there. Yeah. All right. And he's doing Um Bob. Okay. Hanson's on there. All right. All right. Let me just go, Amit. All right. Thanks for watching me. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe, and share. And I'll be back tomorrow, guys, for a wild card Wednesday. We're going to open a pack of cards. Uh, uh, it's a little bit different than the, the Cosmic card of the day. It's going to be a whole pack. And I'm not going to get you guys to guess them. I'm just going to react to them. And then we'll do, we'll do a Cosmic card also. All right, thanks for watching me, y'all. Have a great day. Thanks for playing trivia. I'll post the totals from how the trivia went shortly after I get off of here. All right, thanks, guys. Go Raptors. Let's go Raptors. Let's go Raptors.